I have here on my bench an assortment of fuel delivery systems. These are for gasoline fuel injected cars that range all the way from the late 1950s up to the early to mid 1990s. Now that's 35 years of fuel injection delivery systems that I have here. It's kind of an interesting evolution as Bosch went through this change over the years and we ended up with this twin pump design right here in the mid to late 1980s. And over the past nine months, right after I got my 380 SL and found even with a low mileage car, I got all these problems with the fuel injection delivery system and had to do a lot of work. And then I had a couple cars come into the shop and the hoses are rotten and people aren't even aware that they're driving, kind of driving a bomb. <laughs> if those hoses erupt and you have a fire, it can be really bad. That's probably why you see a lot of those old cars burning along the freeway. It's because of rotten fuel hoses. So I started working on some kits beginning with a 380 SL. I'll talk a little bit more about those real early MFI fuel pumps over there. And now I'm working on the fuel delivery system in my 1986 420 SEL, which was also a very low mileage car. And sure enough, I got into there and, and saw some <laughs> suspect fuel hoses. And a lot of people aren't aware that when these fuel pumps wear, they start to lose pressure. And even though they may run, they may not run efficiently and you may have problems with the front end fuel injection system. How many times you heard, well, I change the injectors and I change the EHA valve and I change this and I change that and the car still starts and then it quits and when it's hot, it won't start. I have to crank it and you hear all these stories over and over again. And everyone seems to be throwing money up at the front end on these fuel injected engines. So I'm a firm believer that you start at the back end when you have these old cars and you make sure everything is right on the fuel injection delivery system. So I'm gonna coin a new phrase, FID. I'm gonna have FID kits, FID 1, FID 2, FID 3, and FID 4. Because <laughs> I'm tired of saying fuel injection delivery. It's just FID. So I wanna talk about these systems in detail and then I want to discuss some of the problems you might run into and some of the things I'm working on to help you solve the problems and overhaul the systems in your own cars. I know I've gotten a couple of comments that people say, well, why are they so bad? Why are they so poorly engineered? <laughs> why are there all those problems? Hey, come on. Anytime you have a car 30 years or older, you have issues that come up that I don't think the engineers ever even thought of. And so is the case with these. I've often said 25 years, that's it. 25 years and cars start going this way very quickly. And it has a lot to do with aged rubber and plastic parts. And of course you have the electrical components that run and run. People think these electric pumps are gonna run for 40 years. No, that's not true. So what I wanna do is provide kits so people can get back there and replace everything. Just replace everything particularly if it's a good car and you want to keep it and you want to make it a reliable driver, start at the back end. So now I'm going to take you through the evolution of the FID systems in Mercedes-Benz from the late 50s up to the early 1990s. I'm going to start with the early systems from the late 50s up to the mid-1970s. They were fairly simple. In fact, these very early pumps didn't even have a filter at the back end of the car the filter was up at the front in the engine compartment. Now this is what is called the long MFI, meaning mechanical fuel injection pump that first showed up in the late 50s. This is the same pump that's on my 1959 220SE fuel injected sedan, very rare car. Now as far as what I can do to help you with this, almost nothing. Both of these pumps, this is the long pump, this is the short pump, uh, you can't buy these new. Uh, if you find a good one, maybe that's been refurbished, you're looking at over $1,000. These are very highly desirable and their values are really going up. The only thing I can do with the long pump is give you a new seal. If the bottom plate is leaking, I can give you a seal. But as far as internal parts, internal seals, I don't have anything on this pump, okay? And then in the mid-1960s, they went to the short pump, 
Uh, this is the type of pump that I have on my 1970 280SL. Now this pump also resides in the back right by the fuel tank and there's no filter attached to it. It just pumps fuel right up to the filter in the engine compartment. This pump I have a reseal kit. I don't have an overhaul kit. I gotta, I gotta make that clear. I have a reseal kit which gives you all the O-rings that you would need to take this apart and reseal it because these do start leaking. They will work, but they start leaking fuel. They'll leak fuel out of here. They'll leak fuel out of this housing right there. And it can be really frustrating. Once again, don't live with a leaking fuel pump. Okay, so those are the two MFI or mechanical fuel injected pumps. And then in the late 1960s, this first, uh, these first showed up in the 1970 model, 280 SC 3.5, the 300 SEL 3.5. This is a small V8. This is the fuel delivery system for the Bosch DJetronic electronic fuel injected system. And, you know, it's pretty simple. It had a pump and a filter. That's what was uh, mounted on the back. It didn't require real high pressure. It was more of a high volume flow to the engine because the engine was fired with electronic fuel injectors, not mechanical fuel injectors. Now these pumps right here are no longer made. You will find some that run, but you have a problem with leakage both right here and right here. I do have some seal kits that you can reseal this upper part, but to reseal this part here means you need to uncrimp these factory crimps and take this whole pump apart, and that's tough. So about all I can give you if you have this type of pump and want to keep it is I've got a couple seals for the top part of the cover and I have some used pumps that run, you have to reseal them yourself. Because of this, uh, so many of people are having problems with these pumps and they couldn't buy them. I set out almost a year ago to come up with a conversion. Here's the conversion here, converting to a newer style Bosch pump. This is not a Mercedes pump. It has to have a lower pressure than the CIS pumps that came out in the mid uh, 1970s. And you can see here, I've got to have some special fittings and the whole kit gives you all the hoses and the mounts and everything. So if you have a 1969 uh, to 1975 small 3.5 or 4.5 V8, I can help you by giving you a conversion kit for your DJetronic fuel injection system. When Bosch introduced the CIS fuel injection system or the K-Jetronic in the mid 1970s, they had to make some changes and things got a little more complicated as the engineers raced to try to figure out how to solve some of the problems associated with a higher pressure fuel injected system. The pump puts out more pressure and they found they had problems with the pump making noise and the fuel foaming. So they came up with what was called a damper. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, should I replace the damper? This is just a hollow chamber right here. And, and it's made out of stainless steel. There are a couple different types, but the whole purpose of the fuel damper was to provide some dampening of the fuel when it came out of the tank so you wouldn't get air and foaming between the fuel tank and the pump and the pump would run quieter. And then they realized they had problems with hot starts, vapor lock. They had to come up with a way to keep constant pressure in the system when the engine was hot and they came up with what was called a fuel accumulator. Now this is kind of a mystery part. A lot of people wonder what they should do with this. When does it go bad? How do you test it? And so on. I'm not gonna cover all that in this video. I will do a video later on where I cut this in half and show you what is going on in here. But this is basically a chamber with a diaphragm and uh, fuel pressure builds up in this chamber, stretches the diaphragm and when you shut the engine off, if everything's right in your system, it'll hold pressure. So when you go to start the car, let's say you walk into the store, come back in five minutes, the engine's hot, it'll fire up and keep running. It won't fire up and die. Now, one of the ways you can check this is it has a chamber here which flows back to the fuel damper. Well, that's a leak chamber. It's a safety device, okay? If this diaphragm ruptures and fuel's going to leak down here and go back in to the fuel damper and then it'll recycle through the system. So this is a closed system and just because the diaphragm ruptured or gets a crack, it's not going to leak fuel <laughs> down the road. 
There is one way you can do a visual check on whether or not this accumulator is damaged. You can remove this hose, remove the rubber hose on this end, and if you get fuel leaking out of this chamber, then the accumulator is bad. So the fuel accumulator can be a problem on these old systems because of the age of the diaphragm, and particularly it does not like all this ethanol gasoline that it gets today, and particularly when the engine doesn't get run very often, it sits with fuel in it. So some of our kits, we offer the accumulator separate, and I think in the new twin pump kit, I'm going to just include the fuel accumulator, because look, you pull this off the car, you take this all apart, you replace the pump. We give you pumps, we give you hoses, we give you clamps, and new filter, and all kinds of instructions to show you how to drain your fuel out of the tank and do this yourself. You do all that work, put it back together, and find out your accumulator's bad, or three months later the accumulator goes bad, and you gotta do it all again. <laughs> so even though these aren't cheap, when you think about the economy of labor, they are cheap. So my recommendation is, hey, look, if you're doing this overhaul, I would recommend you change the accumulator unless you have some record that it's been changed in the last five to 10 years. Now this system here showed up on the 450SL, the 450SE, the 280SE W116, and ran up through the 380SL mid 1980s with a single pump, a filter, accumulator, and a damper. And then suddenly, in 1986, everything changed again on almost all gasoline cars. And there's something missing. Anybody want to see what's missing here? <laughs> you've got two pumps now, you've got a filter, and you've got an accumulator. The accumulator's smaller, by the way, but what's missing? That's right, the fuel damper. Engineers decided, well, if we run two pumps in series, we can reduce some of that foaming and, and pump noise, and therefore we don't need to use a damper. Now, some people think that two pumps were provided for redundancy. Well, not necessarily so. That wasn't the primary reason. It may be that if one pump fails, you can probably get home on the other pump. It isn't gonna run as well as it does on two pumps. Because think about this. You have fuel coming in here to this rear pump, and if this pump fails, then this pump has to suck the fuel through the resistance of this pump before it gets to the filter. If the forward pump fails, then this pump is actually trying to force fuel through a non-working pump, which will increase the friction. You can kind of understand, no, it's not for redundancy. It's to get the system to be more reliable and get more steady fuel pressure to the CIS injection in the engine compartment. And I believe because of the twin pumps, they were able to go to a smaller accumulator because my hunch is these twin pumps build pressure much quicker than a single pump. So all your 420 SELs, your 560 SELs, your 560 SECs, the 560 SL, which is becoming quite collectible along with the SEC, and these cars are getting quite valuable. So when you go to do this in your collector Mercedes, I'm gonna actually call these collector cars, you wanna change everything. That's why in this kit, I'm going to provide a new accumulator. I'm gonna provide the new uh, supply hose which goes from the filter to the supply line to the engine compartment and you're going to get a bunch of different hoses and some clamps because some of these parts may not be available in the future and I'm going to show you how to replace some of these parts and without having to replace the whole you know sixty seventy dollar part and still get a good fuel hose this was the problem I saw on my uh, 420 SEL even though it was you know 90,000 mile car, I get suspicious when I see this kind of brown staining on fuel pumps and filters. It usually means fuel's been weeping and that's dried varnish over a long period of time. This hose here, I got some chafing and, and some beginning rot going on right there. So I wasn't happy with that, even though I didn't want to do this job. 93,000 mile car, why do I need to rebuild the FID system? <laughs> Oh boy, another project. So I'm going to do it though because I don't want to have a problem down the road driving that car. And it could be a problem because you don't know what these pumps are like. 
even though the car is a low mileage, is still 35 years old, 35 year old pumps. I'm sure these are the original. So today I'm working on putting this all together as a kit, making sure I got all the hoses, all the clamps. You'll get two brand new Bosch pumps. I do not believe in using aftermarket fuel pumps. This is too critical. I've seen too many problems with those. I don't have a problem with aftermarket accumulators because that's not a sophisticated, you know, electronic part. It's basically just a chamber with a diaphragm in it. My kit will include aftermarket accumulators, but all my kits, all of them, all the way from the 1970 uh, DJ kit, they'll all come with authentic Bosch electric fuel pumps. So there you have it. Uh, <laughs> I've got my work cut out for me, but I hope when I get done with this one, this is going to be FID number four. I hope I get done with this one. That'll be the last because I'm running out of steam. These cars don't run on steam, but I do. <laughs> so keep an eye on YouTube. Probably within a week, uh, this kit will be ready to ship.